why is there evil, war, murders, drugs, rape, and crime, if God didn't create it? Why can't he just stop evil, and make things good? Why must there be evil? Why can't he just remove evil from the hearts of men, and make them kind and caring? Why didn't he just change the mind of the man who invented the atomic bomb for destruction? Etc. God says in Malachi 3 6, I am the Lord, I change not, so God is settled in his ways. What are the ways of God? Did you ever ask yourself that question? No, because when you do your research, you will find out that the gods or God of your Bible and Quran is not always good. Many of his ways are evil. Look throughout your so-called holy scriptures from cover to cover. There are countless evil events in the Torah, Talmud and Mishnah, Bible, Old and New Testaments, the Quran, and their many traditional books, like Hadith and Sunnah, such as the war with Muhammad, Quran 3-152, the destruction of the Tower of Babel, Genesis chapter 11, the story of Lot giving his virgin daughters away, Genesis 19-8, Lot having sex with his two daughters, Genesis 19-32-36, Abraham deserting his wife Hagar and his and her son, Ishmael, Genesis chapter 21, David and Bathsheba committing adultery, 2 Samuel 11 3-5, Judah has sex with Tamar, his daughter-in-law, who plays as a prostitute, Genesis 38 24, tribes killing other tribes, Genesis 34 25 to 26, the story of Joseph being sold by his own brothers, Genesis 37 28, boiling children and eating them, 2 Kings 6 28 to 29, Jesus being crucified, John 19 23, and I can go on and on. The evil stories of the Bible and the Quran, which are the holy scriptures of the three main denominations, Muslims, Christians, and Judaism, which almost the whole world bases their life upon, overpowers the good stories of the Bible, which brings the question to mind, is the God of the Bible and the Quran evil, or is he good? And why does God give the devil so much power? First let us define the word evil, and what is evil? According to the etymological dictionary, the word evil comes from, evil, 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 from oi. Evil meaning morally bad or wrong. Wicked, an evil tyrant, evil spelled backwards is live. So, do you live to be evil? Think about it. From the moment the sperm is released from the penis of the male, you race against other sperms to get to the ovum, and if you don't make it, then you die. Then, in the womb, you went through a fight with your twin, whom you killed in the womb in order to make it here. Thus, every baby is born a killer, every individual born into this world is a killer from the womb. He or she does not yield to others but goes for self, to hell with the millions of others. From the moment you are born you are destined to die of old age and become feeble again. Why? Why does God, be it Yahweh, Allah, Rab, Jehovah, Elohim, Thehos, Dios, whatever name you call him, allow this to happen? Does religion teach these evil acts? Is there evil in Islam? Yes, is there evil in Judaism? Yes, is there evil in Christianity? Yes. Let's take a look at some of the evil stories of your most holy scriptures, the Quran and the Bible, where God, Thehos, Dios, Allah, Jehovah or Yahweh, commits the crime himself. Let's begin with the story of Muhammad, when he lost the battle of Uhud because his followers fled from their post to collect the booty, plunder taken from an enemy in the time of war, and they were defeated by their enemy as Quran 3 to 152 states, until he flinched and fell to disputing about the order, and disobeyed it. Doesn't Quran 59.22 say Allah, knows, all things, both secret and open, so why didn't Allah focus their minds on fighting in Sabil Allah, path of Allah, instead of diverting their attention to booty? Or just wipe out the enemy with the snap of a finger? Or better yet, just don't let all of this killing and warring between humans take place. Just change their hearts to love each other, since he gives, and takes life, Quran 50.43, in Quran 14.19, it states, if he so will, he can remove you and put, in your place, a new creation. So why not remove the war and hate, if you are a good God? In the battle of Badr, Allah sent down 5,000 angels in Quran 3 to 125 and it states, your Lord would help you with 5,000 angels making a terrific onslaught, so why didn't he do the same for the battle of Uhud? Allah allowed Muhammad to receive a blow across the face by a stone, he suffered wounds to his arms and chest, and two of his teeth were broken. Hamza, a devoted follower of Nabi Allah Prophet of Allah, was also killed by a javelin in his chest, in this battle by an Ethiopian slave named Washi under the order of Hind. For revenge, Hind ate his liver and heart. Where was the help of Allah, with all of this happening to Allah's creatures? If the Quran 3 to 152 claims that the Muslims lost this battle because they were more concerned with the booty, then why did Hamza, a devout follower die, and why did his personal messenger Muhammad suffer casualties, Mata Nasser Allah, 
Quran 110 to 1 to 3, in Quran 3047, it says that we have decreed that the believers will be victorious, and in Quran 4051 it says, victory will be granted to our messengers, and to those who believe, both in this life and on the day of resurrection. So the question now Muhammadans is this, since Muhammad suffered from food poison for three years by a Jewish woman named Zainab bin Harit, because he murdered her husband, Salam ibn Mishkam, then married her, and she sought revenge by killing him. Did Allah forget that Muhammad was his messenger, because in this case, Zainab ibn Harit was victorious? Continuously throughout the Quran, Allah tells his followers to kill the disbelievers, Quran 2-191, kill in the path of Allah, Fakatilu fi sabil Allah, Quran 484, this explains why there is so much terrorism and bombing amongst the Muslims. When you are raised up from four years, four months, and four days, you are taught to memorize this holy book that teaches you to Katil fi sabil Allah, kill in Allah's path, Quran 2-191, Allah even made a punishment in Quran 533 for those who dare to fight against him, and his messengers, and it says, the punishment is execution, or crucifixion, or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. Now, ask yourself, why is it when you turn on the news, the Muslims are always blowing up buildings in the name of Allah and hijacking planes, killing prime ministers and rabbis such as Rabbi Kahan. They even sent one of their assassins Nozair to kill me, and now he is in jail in a Christian state, so whose God is the greatest? The Christian or the Muslim? Doesn't Allah say in Quran 41:46, whoever works righteousness benefits his own soul, and whoever works evil, it is against his own soul. Quran 42:30. Whatever misfortune happens to you, is because of the things your hands have wrought. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want on October 2, 1995 AD, 10 Muhammadan men, including Nozair, and the blind Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman to bomb the World Trade Center, they would be found guilty, and sentenced to a Christian jail. Remember war in Bosnia? Muslims fighting against other Muslims in Segovia? Quran 492. Why is the all-loving Allah allowing this to happen? In Quran 2-213 it says, Mankind was one single nation, and Allah sent messengers with glad tidings and warnings, and with them he sent the book in truth, to judge between people in matters wherein they differ. But the people of the book, after the clear signs came to them, did not differ among themselves, except through selfish contumacy. Quran 49-13 says that you were created into nations and tribes that you may know each other not that you may despise each other. Most important, in Quran 436 it says, Serve Allah, and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer ye meet, and what your right hand possess, for Allah loveth not the arrogant, the vainglorious. This does not sound like the same Allah who tells people to kill in the Sabil, path, of Allah, Quran 484, or kill, slay, them wherever you find them, Quran 9-6. So is there a good Allah and a bad Allah, like the wicked witch of the West and the good witch of the East? Why are there so many different sects of Muslims, such as the Wahhabi, the Ahmadiyya, Aqwani Muslim, the Nation of Islam, Sunni, Ansars, Baha'i, Shiite, etc.? And why did your God allow the Pakistanis to test nuclear bombing against India after the so-called arms war is over? Just what can an arms war do to this planet? Now let's look at the mentality of this. What is considered the strongest country in the world? USA. Now, what is the religion of the USA? Christianity. Now what is the religion of the Indians? Hinduism, and what is the religion of the Pakistanis? Islam. So now, you have people who are Hindus and people who are Muslims, with the power in their hands to destroy the world, which was given to them by their gods. Doesn't Allah say in Quran 4068, when he decides upon an affair, he says to it be, and it is. So couldn't he just have said be? and it is and change the evil thoughts of Nozair, the blind sheikh, Ayatollah Khomeini, Muammar Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein and all the Muslim terrorists? Or, does Allah condone this type of behavior? Allah himself is telling the Muslims in Quran 2-216 killing is prescribed upon you. However, they are forgiven in Quran 48-25, if they trample other Muslims while rushing to fight. Then Allah contradicts himself in Quran 492, when he says, never shoot a believer, but it happens, by mistake, compensation is due, if one so kills a believer. Couldn't Allah, the all-seeing, all-knowing, just prevent all this from happening? Let's look at the rivalry story of Cain and Abel in Quran 527-31 where Allah allows Cain to kill his brother Abel, because he has full knowledge of all things, Quran 49-16. This same story is found in the Bible in Genesis 4-4-8. To top it off Quran 531 says that Allah, himself, sent a raven, who scratched the ground, to show him, Cain, 
how to hide the shame of his brother. This rivalry Bible story came from the Tamaraean story of Enki and Enlil, who were brothers and this Bible story was settled when Nekabah gave birth to Seth, Genesis 4.25, who was the Babylonian word for Seth, the Egyptian deity. This conflict is repeated in different stories throughout the monotheistic religions, from Mosesism to Mohammedism. They all come from the root of Egyptian culture. Now, let me ask you something about the Cain and Abel story. If Allah automatically sent a raven after Cain killed Abel, that means he was watching Cain killing Abel, correct? Now if he was watching Cain kill Abel, couldn't he have told Cain to stop, like he told Abraham to stop when he was about to cut Isaac's throat, Genesis 22 9-12, or Ishmael's throat to Muslims? Wouldn't that have been possible? Yes, Mr. Preacher Man, it would have. God or Allah could have prevented this incident from happening by accepting both of their offerings, or don't put brother against brother rivalry, or the need to test people, if you know all things. What about Eve or Hawa? God should have stopped the devil from tricking her, then there would be no sin, right? So this means that he wanted all this to happen. What was the point Allah? Allah sees well all that ye do according to Quran 49:18, so he could have prevented Cain from killing Abel? Just as if you see a child walking across the street, and you see a Mack truck coming, you could prevent the child from being hit, or you could stand back, like Allah or God did, and watch the murder of the child, just like Allah watched Cain kill Abel. According to your holy Quran, this Allah that you Muslims worship is a killer, or he sends his Malaikat angelic messengers to do his killing for him. In Quran 50, 36, the Malaikat angels are boasting on how many generations before them did we destroy for their sins. How about the story of Thamud? Thamud was sent as a warner to a people who rejected him. Allah sent a she-camel amongst them as a trial for them, and they hamstrung the she-camel and killed her. So Allah sent his angels in Quran 54 31 who sent against them a mighty blast, and they became like the dry stubble. In Quran 36 29 it says, it was no more than a single might blast, and behold, they were like ashes. Then in Quran 54 34, it says we sent against them a violent tornado with showers of stones, which destroyed them, except Lot's household. This is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was sent as a warner to save the people however they rejected him, and the two cities were destroyed. Abraham stood and bargained with the Lord in Genesis 18 23-32, to spare the two cities if he could find 50 righteous people, however, it lessened down to 10 righteous people. This same evil story can be found in Genesis chapter 18-19. Where Lot volunteers in Genesis 19 8 to give his two virgin, untouched daughters over to the angry mob instead of two angels that he just met. Now why would God put the thought in Lot's mind to turn his virgin daughters Lubna and Jarla over to the angry mob? Then if you go down to verse 11 the angels blinded the mob, Quran 54 37, and verse 13 says, The Lord hath sent us, the angels, to destroy it. Sabriya, Lot's wife, after being warned not to look back at the city, looks back at the city, and is turned into a pillar of salt, Genesis 19 26. So then, his two daughters, Lubna and Jarla wanted to take revenge for their mother's death. And their father's willingness in giving them over to the mob. So in revenge, they committed incest with their own father, and gave birth to two sons named Moab of my own father, and Benami son of my own nation of people, Genesis 19 31-38. All these are the things a good God would not let happen. Is this God Allah good or evil?